Well, good morning. Uh, just still working on the 3403C, and uh, today I'm going to start being a little bit more methodical in the process that we're going to track through as we start looking at each of the steps. But before we do that, I just wanted to show you the uh, capacitors that uh, uh, I found, you know, again, uh, that we found uh, under that little uh, cover. Here you can see the uh, the capacitor that failed, uh, and this is a, a 3.9 picofarad uh, capacitor. And you can see that there's like, um, these are a porcelain capacitor, and so they were the precursors of the ceramic capacitors as far as I'm aware. And so it, I wouldn't have expected the dielectric to come out like that. It's almost as though it's actually flowed out of the two ends, because the other end here had that same uh, look to it before the little uh, wire had corroded completely off. So I wouldn't have expected that, uh, but uh, uh, clearly it, uh, it did. Now, what they have is they have two capacitors. They have this 3.9 and this 3.3 picofarad capacitor in parallel. And so uh, they're probably trying to get, well, I don't really know. They're doing one of two things. They're either trying to get uh, a slightly wider uh, uh, impedance band because this first part where these capacitors are is the attenuator that takes the uh, signal in and then attenuates the value before it passes off to the input amplifier. Uh, I think I incorrectly referred to it as a filter. So they're either trying to get a wider impedance band where there's a, a given impedance or these things had some higher ESR and so by putting them in parallel they were trying to decrease the ESR of them uh, or something like that. But uh, anyway, what you ended up with was those three capacitors that were in a row. And so they made up, uh, these two make up about a 7.2 uh, picofarad capacitor. And then that last one, C1, you can just tune in and out uh, as you tune the, uh, the system. But for the purposes of getting this working, I think I can get away with just dropping in a 3.3 three, uh, ceramic, which is this guy here. This is a 1K 3.3 three ceramic. And then you know, re reinstalling this guy. And then uh, we should be able to, uh, you know, control the attenuation sort of uh, by simply decreasing the input signal. Um, and so that would then at least let us start looking at uh, the various different uh, stages. So what I'm going to go do uh, before we, you know, actually start doing the debugging is I'm going to go and reinstall this guy and then I'm going to install this guy in here. Now, if that doesn't work and we're still having uh, problems uh, with the, the input stage and the attenuator, uh, I also bought this 6.8 uh, picofarad guy here. Now, these caps are 3.3 you know, 3 and 3.9 is 7.2 picofarad, and each one of these is plus or minus a quarter of a picofarad. So, you know, they're 7.2 plus or minus half a picofarad, ignoring the difference in impedance and, and so on. So the 6.8 fits inside that range, uh, and so hopefully, you know, we might be also able to simply replace these two with one, just for the purposes of getting this running. Once we can work out and get it running, and then we start trying to tune it in, um, what I'll do is I have some other uh, caps that I need to buy as well, and some other bits and pieces, so I'll just do one big order at DigiKey or Mouser, and uh, then we'll update things. But for the purposes of just seeing if we can get this to work, we'll use uh, these caps. So let's go and take a quick look at uh, the overall uh, diagram uh, that the system runs in. So you can sort of get an idea of the next few videos that we might do as we work through the various stages. All right, so here's the basic uh, block diagram of, of the unit here. And this box here is the converter assembly that we're going to be uh, uh, trying to get working. And basically, what we're going to try and do is make sure that uh, as we put a uh, input signal in here, that at the end here, we get plus or minus one volt uh, full scale so that we can go and confirm that the converter assembly is working. Now, I'm going to start by uh, doing it on DC only. And the reason being is if we look at basically the block diagram here for DC only, um, we start taking out a few pieces, a few components along the way. 
you know, the attenuator is always used, and then the attenuator feeds into the input amplifier. And we'll take a look at this on the board. Um, the input amplifier does uh, two things. It has two parts. It has basically an AC path, which then comes down through the thermopile into the converter amplifier that has feedback that runs through another part of the thermopile and then ties in the feedback again into the thermopile protection. And how the protection works is it uh, turns off the power to the output stage of the input amp as required. When we select DC though, we are actually using the other path here. And so we basically skip the thermopiles, the conversion amp, and we go straight into the variable filter. So what we'll be able to do is to look initially at the input signal here, the attenuator, and then see where what the value is coming out of the attenuator. And down here you can see a little diagram they've helpfully given you that shows what the attenuator should be doing on each of the ranges. So we can easily inject a signal at the start of the attenuator and then look at the output of the attenuator to see what the signal is actually doing and make sure that the attenuator section is working correctly. Then we can go in and say, okay, now that we know the attenuator section is working correctly, we can start looking at the input amplifier. And we will know the signal coming into the input amplifier, and so we can start looking at the DC signal coming out of the input amplifier because we again have an approximate gain value for the input amplifier. And then we can move back down the path through the variable filter through the DC amplifier and do a gain look at the various gains that come in and out of those looking for our one volt full scale. And so that should helpfully help us, well that should help us work out exactly what the uh, issue is as we go through each of these, uh, these stages. So if we take a, a look at the board and see how the board relates to what we've got going on here, let me move that out. You know, we have the input uh, section coming into here, and then where those two C2 and C3 were, um, and then these capacitors in here, this is all part of the attenuator circuit over here. And so as we select each of the different ranges, these little read switches here are going to switch uh, capacitor and resistor arrays, or capacitor arrays, back into the circuit that will... Uh, attenuate our signal. From there, the signal comes into the input. This is the input amplifier and it comes in here on pin 1. And so this input amplifier then gets, you know, power and so on from the protection circuitry. The protection circuitry is over here uh, and here. And uh, that then feeds into the thermocouple or the thermopile, which is this uh, can here. And this thing I believe is probably unobtainium unless I buy another working meter. Uh, in which case then there's probably no point in continuing on with this. But, you know, that goes into there and then, you know, we'll come out into the DC amplifier and the variable filter, which are on the, the other board on the A3 uh, assembly. So you can see there's like A2, 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 and then, you know, DC amp here, converter, logic circuits here, and I think the variable filter is on A, uh, A3 as well, which is the other board inside the whole converter assembly. So there we go. So what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go put uh, these capacitors back in and well I'm going to put the one that's working back in and then I'm going to put the uh, other substitute that I've got back in and then we'll set it back up again and start looking at uh, the attenuator and see what the signal levels are. Alright, be right back. So as you can so well let me just put that out there. As you can see I've um, brought in you know, I've got in my uh, ceramic uh, cap there. I uh, cleaned that up a little bit, got the wires back in, and I've removed the, the input amplifier. So we're just looking now at the attenuator section that is coming across here. So this is uh, K1. This is going to turn on uh, when DC comes in. And then these are K3, K4. Uh, and then there's a K5 and a K6 here, uh, maybe 5 and 6. But uh, as we go through the different voltage levels, these read uh, um, relays here and here will turn on and they'll give us that different uh, gain setting that we were talking about. And here you can see the K3, K4 turning on and so on. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, uh, 10 uh, millivolts. So let's go measure the input here. All right, we've got 13 uh, millivolt there. So I'm just going to hold this on here while I scroll down our power, uh, power supply a bit until we get around 10 millivolt. There we go. So now we're basically full scale for the for this attenuator. So what uh, uh, we can do here is how this uh, circuit basically works is I'm getting you know I get my value in here and then it goes through R1 and R2 here um, and then comes back over uh, here uh, through uh, this resistor to this point here which is then taken across here to the input amplifier. So basically if um, we measure here and we measure he uh, here they're going to be very close because these guys here are basically 1k resistors so they're going to be very very close and um, we'll see especially considering that there's no drain and then this input amplifier is going to be a high impedance uh, input so we shouldn't get much uh, current come in uh, on that so if we you know turn the if we set uh, lowest range and we turn the unit on to DC you know we can see 10 volt uh, 10 millivolt there and if I measure the base of this 9.5 meg resistor here we're still at 10 millivolt if I now measure the, the top of that that's a capacitor that's a Teflon capacitor that uh, we can tune the top of that that's uh, you know basically half a, a millivolt oh, so half a 0.5 gain so 5 millivolt and if I measure the little socket here we'll see basically 5 millivolt so that uh, first range is working so now I don't need to track through here again let's just simply let me do this let me simply get in here on against this socket and we can see that it's 5 millivolt and let's go up to you know the 0.1 range which should still be 0.5 gain excellent let's go up to the 1 volt range and we're at um, 1 millivolt so now let me set this to 1 volt and so yep we're at 100 millivolt so the gain is 0.1 let me go up to the 10 volt range the gain should be 0 0.01 which it is so now let me go to 10 volts here come up to the 100 volt range and we're at 10 millivolts which is what I expect so now let me go to 30 volts here we should see 30 millivolts now when I go to the 1000 volt range we should see 3 millivolts so DC wise we're reading everything correctly so let me set this back to 10 millivolts come back down here and we'll just uh, we'll now set up what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my uh, signal generator and we're going to put in some AC voltage here okay so for the AC value I was poking around and I couldn't you know it, it seemed to be broken so let's start from the top and come down um, on the thousand volt range my uh, uh, signal generator will only go to seven volts so we can take a look and we can see okay that's seven volts there so when we come over to this point here and measure it uh, what we should see is 700 microvolts and in fact we do we see 0.7 millivolts so that's and remember, these, there's some capacitors in here that need to be tuned and tweaked and all that. Uh, so this is probably wildly, you know, especially because I replaced the train, wildly out of uh, calibration. Uh, but anyway, we're seeing the right thing. So now when we come down to the 100 range, we should see 7 millivolts. Yeah. We come down to the 10 volt range, we should see 70 millivolts. We're in the ballpark-ish thing there. Now, let me grab the little sheet again. And so we're now, when we came down from the 100, the 100 had, K, and that should be, the 100 should be 
7 millivolts. Now we had K4 and K5 connected. So now, and we've been reasonably good, now we're on the 10 volt range where we should see 70 millivolts and we have K3 and K4. So let's go to the 1 volt range and now we should be measuring, you know, let me set that, assume it's 1 volt, let me set that for 1 uh, volt RMS, which is actually what I'll do, be able to do here. So now when we measure that 1 volt there, we now only have K3, so that should be uh, 0.1 uh, gain, so we should be reading uh, 100 millivolts, and we're not, we're reading 58. And now, when we come down one more, we should be reading, uh, we should have nothing in there, and we should be getting 500 millivolts, and we're not. So, clearly, there's some problem in, with the uh, attenuator, and possibly with the, the K3 uh, circuit. So, let's go take a, a, let me go take a look at the uh, schematic, and then uh, we'll come back. Okay, well, I poked around a little bit more, and uh, I think that um, there's some problem with you know, maybe one of the capacitors in the, the additional K3, K4 uh, enabled circuits, uh, or maybe in the K3 circuit or somewhere, uh, because you know, we're seeing the right, at the DC uh, level, we're seeing the attenuator work correctly. So. Because the attenuator works correctly with DC, that implies that the relays are working correctly and that it's switching those circuits in and out. Um, so I, I'm not sure what uh, is doing. So I think what I'm going to have to do is just take all of these components out, you know, make sure that there's, you know, resolder them in, make sure all the solder joints are good, you know, measure the capacitors, make sure they're all uh, uh, within spec uh, or at least close to the, the specification and replace any that aren't. Uh, and then we'll have to put the uh, input amplifier back in and address the uh, overload condition because, you know, while it does call out specifically the approximate gain for the attenuator, um, I was taking a look at the manual and nowhere in the adjustment uh, part does it actually uh, it tell you to just simply uh, adjust the, uh, uh, the attenuator. It has it in here and it has you reading the voltage from the filter so uh, they may actually just be telling you that the approximate gain is a DC gain and then the, the total you know the, the gain that you're actually getting when you tune it in is the relationship between the input amplifier gain the DC amplifier the filter gain and so on so uh, I think that if I don't find any components over here that are that are bad I think that's the next step uh, anyway, I hope you found this uh, interesting. If you have any suggestions on uh, where to go, what to poke, uh, leave them in the comments. We'll uh, do another part of this uh, fairly shortly. Catch you later. Bye.